Neutral Evolution, Selection and Drift. So before I begin this, uh, you know, this uh, presentation, I hope you have read a very important uh, essay. It's called Nothing in Biology Makes Sense Except in the Light of Evolution. This is by Theodius Dobzhansky, the Russian-born American geneticist of uh, 20th century. It's published in 1973, one of the landmark essays. So please have a look. And this will give you a very interesting perspective of the evolutionary biology in general. So please read this. Uh, you know, I think I think this particular essay will be a very good complementary resource uh, for this uh, talk on neutral evolution too. So coming to the neutral evolution, so uh, you know it is basically post synthesis. You know, the, it's a, a matter of uh, you know development in the field of evolutionary biology. So you're synthesizing. So synthesis, the term refers to combination of uh, uh, genetics versus the classic uh, evolutionary biology so the genetics especially the mutation you know uh, of, that is a, the driving force of the evolution so if you combine these two together the so-called synthesis by Ernst Mayer and uh, so on big legends of the evolutionary biology so that is what that's the biggest development in a uh, 20th century that has happened you see so 19th century we have seen the Darwin uh, postulating the theory of uh, natural selection, isn't it? Theory of evolution through the natural selection. Then 20th evolution is a synthesis, the co combination of the genetics, especially population genetics of uh, Gregor Mendel with Darwin. So that is called the modern synthesis. And post synthesis, the biggest development is uh, Moto Kimura's uh, neutral theory of evolution. Uh, it is called neutral theory of molecular evolution by Moto Kimura, he is a, uh, he was indeed, he, you know, uh, he died a few years back. So he was born in uh, Japan. So I've, I've been to his uh, native place, it's called Okazaki. Uh, it's a small town in, uh, 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 you know, in, in the central Japan. So it's the same place where you, you might have seen the Okazaki filaments, right, during the DNA replication. Small, you know, the uh, the lagging strand synthesizes so-called Okazaki fragments. So same, uh, that is after the another, uh, you know, the uh, geneticist from Okazaki near Nagoya. So he, his theory is very interesting. We will come to in a short while. So in 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 principle, or in in brief, the the uh, neutral theory is about stochastic fixation of mutations. Stochastic means random the word meaning of stochastic means random so any random process you can model by mathematics isn't it so he was basically he was trained mathematician and he then he, sh he took uh, botany during his msc program like most of you right in kyoto university then he migrated to the iowa uh, in the, in the united states in the iowa first then again wisconsin and so on so basically the stochastic fixation of the mutations by Genetic drift is the most important driving factor or driving force behind substitution. That is what he, he argued for, you know. So it's basically drift plays more role than selection. So adaptations are not that important, you know. So until 1960s, see the Darwin's theory was way back, right, in 1880s. Uh, then until 1960s, everybody thought that natural selection and adaptation uh, is the omnipotent force that completely transforms or that determines how evolution works. But then from his, uh, you know, the landmark paper in 1968, now we know that it's not the case. Selection is very minor in comparison with drift. Drift is random process, especially the drift plays role during uh, population bottleneck situations when the population shrinks to only very few individuals. Think of a, a massive asteroid striking the planet Earth. So like, uh, uh, you know, the Yucatan Peninsula, the KT mass extinction event, right? So yes, so that what is the major impact of the KT extinction event? Our lineage sprang out. Till then, you know, the primates are uh, very small in number, isn't it? So it's basically non-existent event. The mammals uh, started up, you know, the uh, radiations of the mammals started post KT extinction event. Because during those events, number of individuals are very less. 
and then the drift plays a role so that is exactly how this uh, theory works you know so majority of substitutions are synonymous so that is also we have seen that what synonymous and non synonymous right synonymous means silent so substitutions are mostly silent so non synonymous that means that amino acid changing mutations are quickly removed by purifying selection by organisms that are well adapted to the environment it's like status quo you know someone is trying to change you then you quickly revert that change back isn't it so how this purifying selection works because babies fail to born you know still birth right if a uh, mutation are happening in a very important gene for example dna polymerase then what will happen the baby um, i mean the fetus die inside the uterus right so there is a way to get rid of such mutation that is called purifying selection you know uh, deleterious mutations are quickly removed from the population because uh, that lineage stops it the vertical transmission doesn't happen you know like down syndrome uh, down syndrome patients are mostly sterile you know so because the population want to get rid of the deleterious mutations you see so that is what so contribution of positive selective pressure to the evolution is too weak to shape the genome significantly so that leads to something called random walk so population shift left and right little bit like a random walk something like drunkard walking you know from a bar how the drunkard walks you know, it's kind of sluggish motion left and right right so that way in uh, uh, you know infinite population when the population size is very large then you know it is kind of like random walk you know it quickly left and right left and right so adaptations cannot shape the population significantly that is exactly what this theory says so one good example a simple example of course is just a fiction so in imagine a small island the island is called garden of eden in the uh, if you refer to the bible there are only two men adam and steve and there is only one woman eve you know so yes so the two men and one woman so the eve will uh, choose to marry only one of uh, her uh, suitors either adam or steve you know so adam is this chap is double a homozygote a a dominant allele while this guy the steve is heterozygote capital a small a and eve is uh, you know as you can see it is basically uh, yes yeah, so eve the the lady is heterozygote capital a small a while this chap the uh, you know so it's basically his name is steve so steve is a a homozygote so it's basically uh, you know a a small a small a this is capital a capital a and the lady is capital a small a you know so yes yeah, so uh, this guy is a dominant allele both homozygous dominant now homozygous recessive while this lady is heterozygous so if she chooses him if she chooses him in that island nobody else is living so the whole island population downstream population depends on her decision whom to marry you know so that is very interesting isn't it so the percentage of capital a uh, the home, you know the dominant allele and recessive allele in the population forever depends heavily on uh, on which she chooses you know if it's adam the population will have 75 percentage capital a and 25 percentage small a at the same time reverse if she chooses steel population will have 25 percentage capital a while 75 percentage vast majority will be recessive small a you know so that is how that choice matters a lot so in nature this choice is completely random it is not affected by adaptation at all you know so especially during the population bottleneck situation who survives you know it just happened that you you know you happen to be in an island for example when nuclear holocaust happened uh, you were uh, rather i would say you were swimming you know in a in a sea when a forest fire happens so it just happened it you are just lucky that you saved it you know so all these things can happen just by the matter of luck so kimura's neutralism uh, neutralism or neutral theory of molecular evolution can be contrasted with darwin's selectionism also known as adaptationism uh, selection is really centered on adaptation 
you know organisms uh, differential survival to reproduce uh, because fit alleles survive you know so yes so uh, uh, the idea is that the negative purifying selection is ubiquitous that means it's very common what is this purifying selection that means elimination of the deleterious mutations so elimination means that the person having that deleterious mutation do not uh, you know survive to reproduce to pass on the mutation to the next generation so eliminate so that is called purifying selection so that negative selection is what is happening in the nature most of the time at the same time positive selection that is called darwinian selection what is that it's basically through adaptation you know fixation of advantageous mutations so those mutations that confer evolutionary advantage it increases the fitness so including the directional selection and balancing selection are rare so it is quite rare the positive selection but most of the thing it is basically most of the the mutations are purifying selection you know that is exactly what neutralism is about and because this is rare that has a huge role to play you know that is how the adaptationists or da darwinists justify why the darwinism is also very important so purifying selection this is a statement by austin hughes purifying selection is a norm in the evolution of protein coding genes positive selection is a relative rarity but of greatest interest precisely because it represents a departure from the norm so it is very unusual and that is why it is very very interesting you know the positive selection yes so uh, yeah we have already covered this there are different types of uh, natural selection disruptive selection stabilizing selection and directional selection we have covered that right and we can also say that there is yet another selection called purifying selection so let us say this one is the code of an essential gene very very important gene for example actin you know it plays a major role right actin and tubulin micro uh, uh, tubules right uh, microstructure microfilaments so actin let us say it is actin so if there is a deleterious mutation is happening for example atg that uh, in the middle codon position second codon t changes to a that is going to be deleterious because aag is going to code for an entirely different amino acid so actin molecule will not form so baby will die you know still birth will happen and that is why see a is removed quickly from that population so the population goes back to atg it got reverted so that is what the mutation in the protein coding genes especially the non synonymous mutations are quickly removed because of the purifying selection i hope it's clear you know so every time this kind of uh, uh, you know that um, mutation happens then it is quickly reverted back that is called to get rid of uh, you know the deleterious mutation is called purifying selection and if the purifying selection doesn't happen especially if the gene is no longer essential so then what will happen is that this is an essential gene let us say this is a pseudo gene you know dysfunctional gene non essential gene so in that case you can say that t changes to a then a remains you know so those kind of frequencies of such alleles increases in the population or decreases or stay together because purifying selection is not required are getting the point because it's not an essential if the genes are essential then uh, a non synonymous substitutions cannot be tolerated it needs to be get rid of it needs to be removed by purifying selection so that is what the purifying selection is so yes so this way uh, you know so sometimes you know uh, this sort of things are non no longer essential uh are getting sustained right but even in the essential genes sometime the mutations confer a uh, selective advantage like in adaptation is in uh, system right and uh, darwinian uh, you know the, the classical darwinian selection is of course adaptationist so certain uh, you know the certain non synonymous substitutions in essential genes confer huge Uh, fitness to the organism so such thing are something called gain of function mutation so it's a mutation especially it's a non synonymous in the essential gene that confers 
new or enhanced activity on a on a protein so GOF gain of function mutation the reverse is called loss of function mutation where uh, which is quite often it's the case you, you know in the nature loss of function is very common that result in reduced or abolished protein function so this quickly what is happening with the loss of function is that uh, that individual failed to survive you know to the reproductive age and because of that purifying selection happens so LOF the easy solution is purifying selection but gain of function is very interesting uh, because precisely because of the rarity right it's departure from the norm that is exactly what the the selection is happening here adaptive selection right certain time the mutation confers new or enhanced activity on a protein or even pseudo genes can become genes functional genes by gain of function mutation it's called reversal you know uh, mutation so uh, this gain of function is that term is very much used for virologists especially for coronavirus the sars cov2 uh, you know the pathogen behind the covid19 pandemic right now we are experiencing so this uh, sometime uh, most of the mutations in the virus invalidates the virus so the virus cannot sustain so we are not actually talking much about such loss of function mutations of the virus but gain of function is really interesting because sometimes the mutation make the transmissibility or of the virus increased or avoidance of antibodies the breakthrough infections also uh, you know become apparent because of this gain of function for uh, one good example would be delta variant right now it is dominant in almost everywhere in the world delta variant uh, why because it's a gain of function so gain of function is also very very tricky because uh, you know if you uh, do some uh, site gen uh, site directed mutagenesis to study the gain of function mutation in the virus you know so then the question is about ethics you know scientific ethics becomes a, a a big topic here how ethical that kind of study if you are looking at the gain of function mutations in uh, highly pathogenic viruses you know so there was a very famous paper rather infamous paper in 2012 by in in, in the science so uh, you know that that's by Herbst et al uh, the title of the paper is airborne transmission of influenza a h5n1 virus between ferrets so they induced certain mutation that conferred gain of function that increased the airborne transmission of the influenza virus. So uh, quickly after this uh, very infamous paper, so much of the dialogue started surfacing in the ethics. Uh, uh, philosophers keep on saying that this kind of studies are incorrect, you know, because that might lead to some, you know, so the uh, this cert certain pathogens can slip into the general population. You know so that is big ramification you know so yes so this is how the the wild type you can think of this is what the protein uh, with the ligands so the wild type the ligand is formed normal cell physiology but gain of function so it will have certain hyper activation of the signaling pathways and formation of protein aggregates right so that is what the gain of function but the, in the case loss of function that uh, you know that complex is not even formed you know so the complex function is not being able to perform so that is what the loss of function so usually loss of function uh, is removed by purifying selection while gain of function is lead to selection you know so that that is what the, uh, the Darwinian selection mode right so gain of function mutations are very rare while loss of function is ubiquitous you know so deterministic evolutionary pattern that is the Darwinian model isn't it so most of the non synonymous mutations are deterministic that is what the Darwin's or positive or negative selective pressure right the adaptationist way and confers evolutionary fitness like gain of function mutation so non synonymous mutations are so remember non synonymous means uh, you know it is not silent it changes the amino acid right so non synonymous mutations are fixed in population through natural selection so natural selection is a predominant way to fix these non synonymous mutations especially in the uh, protein coding genes you know protein coding uh, dna that is exactly what you call it as genes so according to the darwinian model 
it depends solely on reproductive fitness of variants in particular environment and environmental conditions so adaptation so adaptation is the driving force behind deterministic or positive or negative selective pressure you know so that is the darwin's way so you know the random mutations result in the genetic variation that is rediscovered by hugo de vries right in 20th century right in which the natural selection acts as a dominant force in the evolution that is exactly what you call it as natural selection isn't it for example here so mutation creates a variation so that variant keep on increasing like delta variant of coronavirus so it's a gain of function so one uh, function got gained uh, you know so the spike protein right some certain mutation the spike protein makes some a lot more transmissible and it spreads quickly so that means its frequency increases almost one now delta variant right so yes so that is called the natural selection so advantageous mutations are subjected to positive selection pressure ultimately get fixed like delta variant you know so gain of function mutations so positive darwinian selection that is what you call disadvantageous mutations that means deleterious mutations that invalidates the coding region gets eliminated through negative selective pressure called purifying selection and now what is neutral mutations neutral mutations doesn't have any evolutionary functions you know so that results in polymorphisms so snp single nucleotide polymorphisms uh, you know so that sustain in the population by the polymorphisms so uh, a quick recap there are several ways of natural selection purifying selection means elimination of the deleterious mutation while positive or darwinian selection favors advantageous mutations so direction selection disruptive stabilizing and balancing you have learned all these terms in the last module please check it out so neutral theory of the evolution of the uh, moto kimura in uh, 68 is that most of the synonymous mutations synonymous means silent right or neutral neutral means does not confer evolutionary fitness so it has something to do with the degeneracy of triplet codon that we have seen in earlier module right so degeneracy means the uh, the third position of the codon is highly degenerate 98 percentage is degenerate so that means that even if uh, the mutation happens at the third position it randomly goes it rarely causes amino acid change so most of the mutations are uh, synonymous or silent you know so there are, of course there are some exceptions that uh, you know the mutations that are influencing the SI RNA secondary structure and differential usage of particular tRNA. You know, codon usage bias. So such mutations are exceptions. You know, so yeah, synonymous mutations are fixed in a population through stochastic event called genetic drift. So how these synonymous mutations are fixed in a population because of the drift. And again, the drift is more important when. The population shrinks during the population bottleneck phenomenon right so most of the non-synonymous mutations arise through the natural selections are purifying that is what the, the kimura observed in nature you know most of the non-synonymous mutations are purified by the way purifying means to get rid of the deleterious mutation that is what the natural selection is about you know the neutral selection is all about by the way uh, neutral selection depends a lot on the effective population size or any the drift as well right fixation through the natural selection or the drift is dependent on effective population size so effective population size dependent on offspring producing or fertile members of the population so no old people or so young people are not contributing much only fertile people and also infertile uh, people who cannot may uh, uh, you know who cannot uh, produce offsprings are also not included for the ne you know so ne is very interesting you know so only uh, looking at the ne you can say that is it going to be genetic drift or is it going to be natural selection favor right so when ne varies across multiple generation this is the generation with the smallest ne becomes limiting factor for fixation of the rates both uh, uh, both of these, uh, you know, natural selection as well as neutral theory, that is a genetic drift, right? So, any becomes smallest during catastrophes affecting the genetic diversity. 
so that is what you call it as genetic bottleneck situations you know so during genetic bottlenecks like asteroid impact any becomes very small and at that time drift plays a major role for it so what is drift by the way so stochastic fixation of allele frequency due to random sampling of gametes from generation to generation in a population is called genetic drift so it can happen at various levels for example in one ejaculate there are millions of sperm and each sperm is having its own genetic uh, you know, it's not exactly the same, right? There are, uh, you know, there are, uh, of course, uh, it has got its own polymorphism. And which sperm gets fertilized into the ovum? That is, again, matter of chance, sheer chance. So it's kind of completely mathematical uh, thing. You can model it with uh, mathematical probabilistic equations, right? So that is what the drift can happen at the molecular level as well. You know so microscopic level or macroscopic level during the boat next situations like uh, the guy is walking uh, the beetles some beetles are preferentially being killed by right? drift random drift right so smaller the any the larger the effect of the stochastic event so stochastic event becomes larger when uh, effective population size is smaller Right, so mutation rate will be predominantly determined by the genetic drift during genetic bottlenecks. Right, so stochastic fixation of the mutation, that is, a drift is the most important driving force behind substitution, that is, as per the neutral theory of the evolution. So, usually, any is too small in comparison with magnitude of positive selection pressure. So, you know, we are surrounded with several positive selection pressures, so that pressure cannot have much impact because our NE is too small see so contribution of the positive selection pressure the evolution is too weak to shape the genome significantly so non-synonymous mutations are quickly removed by the organisms that are well adapted to the environment because of the purifying selection which I explained so the summary of this neutral theory of evolution by the the Kimura in his 1991 paper is that neutral theory claims that Overhemming majority of the evolutionary changes at molecular level are not caused by selection acting on advantageous mutants, but by a random fixation of selectively neutral or very nearly neutral mutants through cumulative effect of sampling drift due to finite population number under continued input of new mutations. So it is completely mathematical. You know, who survives is just by sheer chance. Adaptation do not play a significant role in evolution as per neutral theory. That is quite shocking uh, elevation for the Darwinist, you know, Darwinian evolutionary biologists, isn't it? And if you look at the genome also, you will see overhemming support for this. For example, if you if you compare the whole genome of human and mouse side by side, if you compare it. You know, so these are basically the sequence divergence at various, you know, partitioned data set in the whole genome. If you look at 5 dash untranslated region, you see that so many of the divergence, almost 31 percentage, uh, 31 percentage, quite a big number, right? Sequence divergence are happening between human and mouse. Why? Because this is untranslated region, so such mutations are tolerated, no problem. It doesn't confer to any uh, evolutionary disadvantage, right? At the same time, uh, you know, so non-degenerate sites in the triplet codon, you know, if such mutations are happening, it will have non-synonymous mutation that will change the protein function. You know, usually that gets removed, you know, so that such mutations are very rare. Only 10 percentage sequence divergence is conferred by such non-degenerate sites. And four-fold degenerate sites, quite high. Because no problem in such uh, sites inside the triplet codon. Four-fold means whatever be uh, the mutation, amino acid is not changed. It's all synonymous. It's all silent. It's nothing leads to non-synonymous mutation. Non-synonymous is very, very tough mutations, right? Very dangerous mutation. So for for degenerate site, the sequence divergence is close to uh, 33 percentage. And in introns, 
bigger than for fault is in trons no problem at all isn't it so as 3 dash untranslated region like un 5 dash untranslated region and retro pseudo genes you know uh, retro means uh, something has to do with the reverse transcriptase isn't it retroviruses so pseudo genes so pseudo genes are in uh, invalid genes right because of the reversal so in such uh, parts of the genomes too the divergence is very high that means that such mutations are tolerated but non-degenerate site within the coding region triplet codon especially the second position of the triplet codons are not tolerated so that is exactly how the neutral theory works so neutral theory is also you can compare that with punctuated equilibrium remember that we introduced this term uh, punctuated equilibrium by uh, stephen j gould and levontin isn't it uh, harvard paleontologists so punctual equilibrium means that it's a non-linear form of evolution you know not like the darwin's gradualism so gradualism is a, a for example the butterflies so gradually uh, mutations are accumulated and uh, passed on to the offspring because of the differential survival due to adaptation right and then as the time goes you can see that two types of butterfly has been formed from the previous population uh, you know it is a uh, it's basically the uh, x y axis is changes in phenotype so it's it's a very gradual it's a slow and gradual process and it's linear you can predict it at the same time punctual equilibrium is not like that earlier you see that it's a brown butterfly and suddenly you see that three other i mean uh, you know uh, two other kinds of butterflies were also formed in the population you know dark brown butterfly and white albino butterflies and from this moment onwards the time you see the y-axis is time no change so this sudden change is so called saltation and grad and no change the stasis so status is stasis is like status quo long period of evolutionary hibernation so long period of stasis punctuated with short period of saltation is what you call it as a punctuated equilibrium so uh, if you compare that with darwinism which is slow linear and adaptationist proce process you know so punctuated equilibrium is very interesting and again that is anti-darwinism you know so by the way darwinism the gradual thing the darwin was looking at uh, uh, you know the living the remains of the living organism isn't it but punctual equilibrium is more common in if you look at the fossils yeah and kimura's neutral theory which one did he favor his neutral theory is overwhelmingly favoring punctual equilibrium model of evolution you know so it explains the you know the gauls and levantins punctual equilibrium uh, observations so if you look at the paleontology so for millions of years you see nothing much of the phenotypical changes but in very short stages uh, of the evolution that means that if you dig you know very narrow bands of the uh, you know the sediments you can see a, a big changes like uh, uh, radiation isn't it uh, yes so uh, yes so many uh, different kinds of uh, you know uh, trait adaptation you can see that uh, not adaptation but morphological variations right so that happens uh, during uh, extremely brief time interval especially that can correlate with asteroid impact when the population bottlenecks happen that is exactly what kimura was saying in his theory isn't it so mutations are mostly evolutionally neutral so drift during population bottlenecks significantly shape the downstream generations you know so when the effective population size shrinks then the drift plays a huge role and that drift explains what kind of generation to be followed you know so after famine for example whoever survives so the survival the person who survives their genotype determines the generation next you know so that is what so the kimura's theory is very uh, much uh, in sync with punctuated model of gold and levantine and also if you look at the philosophy of science surprising parallelism you can see it uh, for example Karl Popper's falsification we have learned that in uh, you know in uh, when we talked about the creative thinking isn't it 
uh, yes, uh, with the biostatistics. So his theory is falsification. So how the scientific progress happened, very gradual, linear, predictable fashion. Versus the American, Thomas Kuhn, paradigm shift. For a long time, no progress. Suddenly, there is a huge problem. So it's something quite similar to the, da the Darwin's mode. Karl Popper, the British uh, philosopher of science and the, the British evolutionary biologist, uh, you know, that the Charles Darwin's model is quite similar. At the same time, paradigm shift of the uh, Thomas Kuhn's revolution. It's not even evolution. It's called revolutions of scientific progress, right? That is quite in sync with the, uh, uh, again, American right gold and levantine's model of evolution uh, that evolution is called punctuated equilibria you know revolution and moto kimura is also uh, something like kun's model of uh, revolution which is non linear and uh, yes so you know the the po uh, population bottleneck drifts during bottlenecks plays a huge role by the way the paradigms paradigm shift model of the thomas kun uh, serendipities are a lot more important than <coughs> uh, Karl Popper's discoveries. You know, discoveries are uh, the predicted like uh, experimental biology, you know, rather than experimental biology, such paradigms or uh, paradigm shifts, inventions. So serendipitous discoveries are a lot more important for everyday life. So that is what the Quinn's paradigm shift is all about. Very interesting parallelism, isn't it?